our industry, but it's going to transform the entire world. So a little bit of background about myself. I'm half Singapore and half British. I've been building technology companies for the past 15 years. I uh, got started building apps when I was about 14. Um, and the introduction um, that I had to digital assets was um, I was very interested in peer-to-peer -peer programs. The idea that you could build a piece of software and it didn't have to go through a central server. So, you know, if we're using this software Zoom at the moment, um, when one communicates to Zoom, it goes through a server and it goes from the server to your computer. And then if you communicate, it goes to Zoom server, it goes um, to my computer. I was fascinated by the idea of a peer-to-peer -peer software. So if you think about um, something like LimeWire or Napster, um, it didn't have to rely on a central server. You know, if you could upload some files and those files um, would be able to be shared with other people in the network. So I built a encrypted peer-to-peer -peer, uh, technology for video conferencing in 2010. And I was um, introduced to the Bitcoin project because it was another peer-to-peer um, -peer software around the time. Also worked with um, WikiLeaks. I built the Android app and helped lead the uh, fundraise. Um, worked at a venture firm, the biggest in Europe. We invested in the likes of Spotify uh, in their uh, seed round. Um, also worked at the Founders Forum and built a number of apps, which um, had a few uh, million users and downloads. Um, one of the co-founders of the Unit Network were basically, um, in, in essence, were a tokenization um, technology, as well as an exchange. We're excited by this idea of the token economy. So what does that mean? So um, you can think of tokens as um, a, a way of digitizing value. And you can think of the economy as everything in the world. You know, you can think of, you know, the people that go to, you know, their job. You can think about your local flower shop, your local um, supermarket. That's part of the economy. We think that every piece of the economy is going to have tokens connected to it, you know, whether it's your the, the sport on TV that you watch, to your favorite music, to your favorite um food, you know, a drink, you know, all of that will have tokens. And what this will do is it will solve the wealth inequity. So there's currently two groups in society that there are the founders and the investors. These are people like Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. And then there are the, um, the investors that give those people money. Then the other side is the employees and the customers, which is most of society, right? Think of the 1%, the they're the founders and investors. The 99% is the customers and employees that are super important for making the 1% money. And we're, we're really confident that tokens are going to make the 1%, the founders and investors, more money on an absolute level, but they're also going to distribute the, the wealth and the equity with the 99%, like the, the everyone else. And how does that work? Um, well, so how it works, is it's going to be much more easy to fundraise. So if someone has an idea for a project, they can easily create a token uh, on the unit network and they can uh, tokenize what they're working on. They can also, um, you know, if you have an existing project or business, you can create a token and distribute some of the value that you're creating with your customers and employees. So the unit network makes it really easy to do that. Um, you just name your token something and then um, hit create and it creates a token for you. And then we provide a number of features that support in, in your token. Um, and, and yeah, I highly recommend everyone to uh, go, go create tokens as well as help people to create tokens. Um, and um, explaining a little bit about some of the community features we support, you can set up a shop so people can use the token that you've created to buy products and services. You can sell um, items on auction. So you, you basically put an item for auction and then people can use the tokens that you've created to start bidding on that item. And the winning bid um, gets to claim that that um, that uh, that product or service. Um, also, you can create a pool to help with the governance of decision-making. Um, and we basically think that the, um, the world is going to go from the opaque system it is now to one where it's much more transparent we, we think that um, the world is going to um, allow for much more equity and uh, much more transparency um, and, and basically people are going to feel much more represented um, in terms of the development of the technology in the crypto sphere uh, we started off with bitcoin you know you can think of bitcoin as you know this really amazing cool technology for sending value receiving value 
um, storing value without trusting a third party like a bank or you know a PayPal a financial institution and then you've got um, Ethereum you know which basically said hey you know decentralized money is cool but there should be other decentralized things we should have a decentralized social network we should have a decentralized news we should have all kinds of decentralized stuff so Ethereum basically provided a tool and a platform to create those decentralized applications and then um, the next level behind that, so you can think of Ethereum that's called the general purpose chain. The evolution of that is what we call a application specific chain. So um, if, you, if you've heard of Polkadot or if you've heard of Cosmos or Avalanche, these are technologies that allow you to build your own blockchain. So instead of you know taking your blockchain and putting it on this blockchain, which tries to do everything like Ethereum or Solana or BNB, you're creating your own blockchain for a very specific use. Um, so Unit is a um, application specific chain. Um, we're, we're built on the Polkadot network and, you know, we're, we're really excited to bring this idea of the token economy and uh, the long tail of tokens to, um, to the world. Um, in terms of how we are building the unit and the token economy, we have a number of ecosystems that we're focused on. So we're focused on several different industries from music to film, to fashion, to hotels, to restaurants to crypto ecosystems, you know, existing crypto ecosystems like the Bitcoin ecosystem, Ethereum, Polygon, Binance, um, Polkadot, you name it, we're tapping into all of these crypto ecosystems. We believe a lot in NFT communities. We think they're, you know, a really uh, interesting model of um, people who understand the value of community have bought into NFTs, but they, they don't yet realize the amount of uh, future that it has. And we want to show this future to them. Um, also, um the various cities were focused on so we have a number of city tokens so you know if you're in a city and you look at you 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 like to be an ambassador our city team is growing and uh love to find a way to team up and collaborate there um yeah a little bit about our initiatives we organize a number of conferences live and online we have a ventures program. So after you finish the master's program, you can apply to our ventures program. And this basically gives you a really uh, fun and interesting project, uh, a process to build your token economy. You know, you get community members. It's completely free. It's um, it's a really good group of people. Um, and then we write a bunch of research reports with university. And then we've got a news wing, which is covering news and updates. A oh, question from Stacey. Uh, what did he say they're building on Polkadot? He said very quickly, that's correct. So we have a parachain that we're building on Polkadot and we want to be the leading uh, project of parachain in the Polkadot ecosystem. So that's really, really exciting. Um, and if anyone's got any other questions, please feel free to message in the chat. Um, a little bit about our technology. So we have a number of features. I can walk you through some of them. Uh, I can actually share my screen. So... Good question. A question from Gang. What is a parachain? So you can think of a parachain as a blockchain, which is um, a parallel chain. So there's many different um, there's many different chains, application chains, which are built on Polkadot, and each one is a parallel chain. So Unit is a parachain. I can also show you this a website called Polkadot JS. So if you go to share my screen, uh, Polkadot.js.org. And you hit uh, polkadot.js.org slash apps. So I'll click on that. So this basically opens up the polkadot panel. And here you can see all of the different parachains. So you've got Kala, you've got Statement, you've got Clover, Bitcoin. These are all parachains. And polkadot is what's called a relay chain. It's like a parent chain. So you can switch to polkadot. What's this? Um, and then you've got all of these parachains. So if you go down to Kusama, you can see all of these are the Kusama based chains. And Unit is currently on the Rococo chain, Rococo test, test network. We see Unit network, that's, that's us. Um, yeah. And we're really looking forward to um, becoming a Polkadot based chain. And also, uh, we're launching this uh, network called Alpha Network on Kusama. So that's uh, pretty exciting. Yep, so uh, going to interject, so like sharding. So you can think of a parachain as a shard of this overall blockchain. It's, it's really an approach to scaling and um, a way of distributing the data in all of these sub-child blockchains as well as increasing the speed and um, 
ability for it to manage more transactions. Uh, Christopher Jappy says par parachain is multi-blockchain. That's correct. So you can think of each of these uh, parachains as a blockchain in itself. Um, yeah, and you know, the title of this presentation was on the uh, metaverse. So the way I like to think of it is um, people like to think metaverse is, you know, you wear the goggles and that is the other, that is the other world. You're in the metaverse, you're, you're, you've, you've worn the Oculus or you've worn the, um, the HTC Vive. The way I like to think about it is it's digitizing your, yeah. your, your being. So, you know, if you think about your Instagram account, your Snapchat account, your TikTok account, right. that is your metaverse profile, right? That is your digital avatar. And, and a lot of people value their digital profile more than their physical profile. You know, they'll take care of their social media page. Um, they will, um, you know, reply to messages. They'll message lots of people. They'll talk and speak with a lot of people virtually, you know, on messaging apps, but they might meet with very few people in, in, in real life. So, um, the, the interesting thing about this metaverse, this digital world, is when it helps improve, I believe, the physical world. So, you know, a lot of people spend countless hours, um, you know, on social media scrolling or looking at videos or messaging people uh, virtually. Um, what we're really excited for is to, to move people back from this virtual world back to the physical world and have it improve their physical um, being so you know provide much more opportunities for people to start businesses for people to um, to um, be taken care of financially um, we think the metaverse or you know the internet smartphones have drastically improved communication we think that they've uh, improved access to information with the internet access to communication on mobile and we think the next big frontier is uh, taking care of people, taking care of people financially. So we think um, tokens and the token economy is an aspect of the metaverse, which is going to bridge that gap. A uh, question here from Gek: So can transactions happen across different chains within the parachain, as long as it stays on dot? Uh, that's correct. So um, there's a funny quote that uh, people used to say: It's um, you know, there's so many. Um, there's so many specifications, right? We there should be a standard. You know, everyone's trying to do their own blockchain, and it's got different uh, names for different things. It's got different um, block sizes. It's got different block lengths. It's got all, all kinds of variations. Someone should make a standard. So someone creates a new specification, and there's another another specification. So um, yeah, there should be a standard. So someone creates a new new standard. Uh, so you can think of parachain. You can think of uh, parachain as a standard of blockchains. So basically, Polkadot provides this thing called Substrate. I'm going to post a substrate.dev. And Substrate is built with the Rust coding language. And it's a bunch of tools for building blockchains. And when you build a blockchain with Substrate, you, um, you are able to become a parachain. Polkadot will take care of the security for your chain. Um, um so, so um david sorry to take you back but will the unit blockchain be built with uh zk Z, zkp zero knowledge proofs um at the moment we're focused on building in the poker ecosystem you can think of zero knowledge proofs as a way of um of scaling too but um the amount of computational um, energy we think in in creating this zero knowledge proofs um are less um uh, is less of a, a good scaling solution compared to using parachains or polka dots. so we're really excited for this approach of um of many different pa parachains you know we plan in the future to become a really chain like polka dog sound too yeah uh question from Seth. what underlying technologies and standards are required to enable the creation and interoperability of a decentralized metaverse and what are the current challenges in implementation in achieving this vision? Um, that's a great question. So the way we view um, metaverse experiences, you know, if you think about what uh, the company Facebook or Meta is doing with their version of the metaverse, and then you've got, you know, Decentraland, you've got, you know, countless other metaverses, how we anticipate it moving towards is there will be a, a winner that, you know, leads the way in terms of um, developing a, an experience for people to build tools and applications 
in this metaverse like environment and platform and then the others are going to be based uh, and learn from that leader so if you think about the iphone you know that was the first real smartphone that was able to reach mainstream adoption and then android kind of came soon after or alongside and it you know you could say copied or you know improved upon the work of the iphone and um, do we think the metaverse will be similar? So that's our um, perspective. In terms of underlying technologies, I think there needs to be significantly better computing power as well as processing power uh, with local devices. I think a lot of people, you know, rely on smartphones, and um, I think it's it's really just a matter of time before the uh, computing. Um, hardware that people have is good enough for people to use uh, this technology at scale but we think it's really just a matter of time okay sorry about the disruption let me uh, let me move one second second I hope it's a bit quiet to hear. Um, sorry about that. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's better. Sorry. Um, yep. So in terms of the, um, yeah, no worries. So in terms of the technology, we think um, the the consumer based hardware for um, experiencing this evolved metaverse needs to be improved. And we also think that the economy around it needs to be improved. So you can think of the 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 way the monetary system works at the moment we are now using you know piece of paper like cash we're using traditional bank accounts there is going to be a money system which is on the internet right so you can think of tokens coins cryptocurrencies this is the the economy of, of the metaverse of the virtual world a lot of money needs to move from our physical world our current you know dollars bank accounts to this new virtual um this new virtual world it's kind of similar to imagine everybody in the world, not everybody, 75% of the world used to use British pounds, right? The UK was like this empire, you know, you got the Commonwealth, all of these countries belong to the UK. And then, you know, people are like, hmm, I don't like the, the British, you know, we we should, or the Americans basically, you know, went across the ocean, unfortunately, you know, took over the Red Indians and they basically said, you know, we don't like the British anymore. We're going to, you know, start a revolution. And they were able to, you know, um, be be these rebels that were able to 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 um overtake the british you know and then create their own country the united states of america right about two three hundred years ago you can think about internet nations and you know the metaverse and blockchain tokenization as the the these um these rebels that are trying to create this new system you know that really wants to provide more opportunity more freedom and you know you might see really big countries and nation states like the united states china you know, Russia, European Union that are, you know, controlling a lot of the emerging societies, uh, emerging markets, not necessarily taking care of the people as much as they should, charging a huge amount of taxes and controlling people. Um, the internet nations, people overlook how powerful it can be. So, you know, people are complaining now that Bitcoin is at 20 something thousand dollars. People are going to be complaining when it's at $200,000, then when it's at $2 million, when it's at $20 million, when every business in the world has a small amount of Bitcoin backing it up, as well as all of our other coins here. You know, there's going to be a, a Christophorus coin, there's going to be a Manish coin, there's going to be a Philip coin. There's going to be tokens and coins for every single person, as well as every single business. And how you can value each of these coins are based on the amount of reserve assets they have. So the amount of coin, the amount of the amount of polka dot, the amount of Solana, these are the parent coins that uh, give these effectively child coins value. Um, yeah, so that, that's a really uh, nice feature. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or topics that would like to cover? I think in previous lecture, we spoke extensively about the token economy and about how the unit fits, the unit network fits in there. So I, I won't, um, won't cover it again. Uh, but if anyone has any other specific points or thoughts, happy to happy to discuss.
else we can end the session early. Cool. I, I guess uh, everyone got their questions answered. And um, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate the time and energy that the Unit Masters team has put into the program. I'm really excited for where it's going to uh, move towards and come. We um, are really in such an early stage in terms of the development of this new technology and you know the amount of problems and opportunities that it can solve for people. So um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Looking forward uh, to so you come. Uh, okay, we've got one more question here from Gek. And if anyone has any others, please feel free to message. When people talk about Bitcoin being a medium of exchange, if there's limited supply and transactions need to be proven through mining, what happens when the last BTC is mined? That's a good question. So effectively, you can think about it as the amount of land that people, um, if you think about a, a, a place like New York, you know, there's only so much land. And if you just add more people, you know, you can't have more land. There's just so much land. So what you can do is you can build buildings. You can, you know, stack people on top of each other and build apartments like that. Uh, but then the price of these buildings and the price of these apartments just goes up, right? So um, same with Bitcoin. You know, there's only a finite amount of Bitcoin. There's only so much more Bitcoin being created or added. Um, so people use fractions of a Bitcoin. So now, you know, 0 0.001 Bitcoin, um, you know, is not very much. But in the future, you know, that's going to be, you know, the the savings of an entire town, you know, um, the idea of one Bitcoin is like, oh my gosh, it's like you own a building, you know, it, it's kind of like people who bought Manhattan real estate two, 300 years ago when it was swampland, you know, they, they didn't really realize how big it could become. There's a question here though, who's going to prove the next transaction? So um, that's a great question because um, the, you require the miners to get rewarded through block rewards and they also get paid transaction fees. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to get an amount of transaction fees. But I think what's going to happen is going to move from proof of work to proof of stake. And it's going to um, experience, it's going to have um, like um, the network to allow to scale, you know, side chains. I am um, fortunate to meet someone uh, who was sort of a big uh, ago, and you know, he was saying that it's going to be very hard to overtake Bitcoin because any improvement of another um, blockchain, they're just going to uh, copy or uh, use this these same features. Um, question here from Ansela: What are your thoughts on acquiring Metaverse right now? Um, I think it's an idea to experiment with, um, and it's a little bit of a gamble. It's kind of like imagine. Um, your you believe that you know the United States is going to be interesting, or you've landed on a new new plot of land, and you're like, okay, where, where are the big cities going to develop? You have to basically buy land in in this place and hope that people build around them and hope that the economy thrives and succeeds. So personally, I would um, I would think of it as a, as quite a highly speculative um, bet. Um, but the community side of things is interesting. So you get to people who are also virtual landowners. And when businesses get built in these virtual lands, um, I, th I think that's interesting. Same with and if I can consider them kind of similar. Uh, what is the end stage for Polkadot? So I think where, what Polkadot will move towards is being a standard for all blockchains. So you know, similar to if you want to build a website, you build on the internet. I think uh, very soon, if you want to build a blockchain, you'll use something like Polkadot or Cosmos. So these are like the two really good options for building blockchains. The other alternative is Avalanche, um, which is you know allowing you to build a blockchain. But I think Polkadot and Cosmos are, are really two uh, really strong contenders. And I prefer Polkadot over Cosmos because the security model, I think, is um, is better. Um, uh, does any of your thoughts? I guess then we can wrap up. Yeah, really enjoyed and appreciate everyone's time today and yeah, looking forward to the projects that people launch as well as the um the the various um initiatives that we're we're supporting with and participating over uh, back to moderator thank you thank you so much uh, Michael for sharing your <laughs> knowledge on this topic and also really thank you to every one of you who participated asked questions and also um, did answer some of the questions in the chat we'd like to um, thank you and encourage you also to be here tomorrow for our demo session. Um, we wish every one of you um, a great day, um, depending on where you are. And um, so 
Um, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for your interest.